we're gonna try to do something a little bit crazy. Build a suburban yard on this city rooftop. I'm trying to create a 900 square foot yard with a huge wraparound deck and over 500 square feet of artificial grass lawn. There are tons of potential issues here because of weight, drainage problems, and having to raise the entire 900 square foot structure above the roof. Big picture, the entire structure is going to be built on top of a pedestal system that raises it off the roof and allows for drainage. The deck portions will be supported by two by six joists that have composite deck boards on top and the yard will be built on top of a two by four plus plywood platform, which will support drainage tiles underneath an artificial grass surface. But there was a huge challenge before we could even get to building. I just got all the materials for the deck delivered. They got some super wet two by sixes. We got to haul all these 16 foot boards onto the roof. I don't know how much they weigh, but I'm guessing like 80 pounds each. I got Bart Komar joining me. I think the idea is that Bart's gonna pull his truck in front here and then use that as a platform to hoist them all the way up onto the roof, which is top of the second story. The next day, with everything up on the roof, we got to work cutting down the two by six joists for the first section of the deck. And as we're cutting these boards, uh, they're pressure treated, but when we cut the ends and expose that, you want to seal the ends of your cut again. We're just throwing this stuff on there to help seal that up. So the plan here is we're going to build out the deck in rectangular sections and level each section as we go because the deck itself is not very flat. So that's where the leveling pedestals we use come in. We're gonna lay out the joists in a square, level that square, then throw all the joists in between, then repeat that process for each section of deck. And while I initially tried to place all the pedestals first and then put the joists onto the pedestals, I found it much easier to attach the pedestals to the joists first and then just put the joists in place. And by the way, all those little black squares that you see on the ground, those are large rubber roofing pads that I picked up at the recommendations of the roofer who did my roof. They have little rubber feet that allow for drainage and help to more evenly distribute the load of each pedestal. Oh, so we got a nice perfect square. Grab some lunch, come back, and then we can start dropping the joists in. So you can probably see, despite all the sunscreen in the world, I am still officially joined the Redneck Club. It's the only Hat I can find. Me and Tex right here, do a little roof decking. Joists are all laid out. I want to talk a little bit about the design of the deck and weight considerations. I spent about $60,000 on this new roof. I don't want to F it up. Weight and spreading the load evenly is a very big concern. I actually aligned these joists with the joists and the ceiling below that are supporting the roof. We are fast forwarding to the end of the day. It was scorching hot out here this afternoon. So one more thing to take care of tonight. Decided to add a little angle here to the deck It'll just kind of flow better into the grassy area without a hard corner here on the deck, I think. We'll get that in and hopefully come back tomorrow. It's supposed to rain, but uh, you know, weather forecasters are often wrong. So we're just gonna see how it goes. So what we're starting to do here is there's gonna be basically a U shape of the deck enclosing a grassy area, like a mini courtyard, if you will, right in the middle here. 
The only difference for some of these sections where we're gonna be doing the grassy parts is the joists are gonna be two by four joists instead of two by sixes. And before you start banging comments that that's unsafe, I will talk about it. That will be strong enough. I'll show you why when we get to the grass. For now, let's finish out this frame. After doing those first two sections, we learned some things and changed up the process for the rest of the sections. When we installed the joist after leveling a single section, it made the leveling relative to other sections difficult. For the rest of the sections, we decided to just create that square around the outside first for all of them so we could get everything level across all the sections before dropping the joist in the entire surface all at once. By the way, I've been loving these Area at Work Outpace sneakers. They've got composite foam protection, but allow me to be much more nimble on my feet as we're jumping around between all these joists. Area at Work's a channel sponsor. Link in the description to check out all their stuff if you guys need some great work for it. We can just take these boards, this, and just set them in here and sister the two by fours to these two by sixes on the same pedestals so they can sit and be supported by the same pedestals as the two by sixes. It's day four of the deck build and now is a time when things are gonna start coming together really quickly. We've got the joists for the remaining sections of the deck all cut to length. Now we just gotta throw the pedestals on them and put them in place. I am excited. I hope you guys are excited. Are you excited? Cause I'm excited. Let's go. Alright guys, the joists are all done. Now you can actually see what the deck is going to look like. I think you can picture it a little better now. If you can't, well, keep watching because we are going to complete it this video. So next step is blocking. Blocking, for those of you who have never built a deck, is just the fancy word for putting a bunch of pieces between the joists that adds lateral strength. Blocking is done! We're calling another audible and adding on to the already huge deck. I think it makes sense to actually have a little deck section right here. I want to build Tex a crazy doghouse and we're going to need some deck space for that. I think it's going to be easier just to build this deck, frame it out while we're doing everything else. Uh, and then we can do the doghouse, which will be a future video. With the framing finally done, I was super excited to get to the deck and I got to work cutting down the composite decking boards for the picture frame border. I just realized I almost forgot to joist tape. It's just taping, right? It can't take that long. Yeah, famous last words. Because before I could put joist tape on, I also needed to check all the boards for level and plane down any of the boards that had a crown of them. And spoiler alert, there are actually a lot. So 
The process of getting all the joists level took about four or five hours of pretty hard work before I could even start with the joist tape. By the way, for those that aren't familiar with what joist tape is, you put it on top of joists or any other surface on the deck that is facing up where water could potentially accumulate to waterproof it and extend the life of the deck supposedly by up to 10 years, so it is a pretty important thing to do. One section taped, that like is a time lapse, but it actually took like an hour and a half. I'm like looking at the rest of the deck. Holy crap. If you've ever had to like tape off a room with painter's tape, there's a lot of little nooks and crannies and stuff. It's kind of like that. I always do this. I always, always scale up and go big and don't scale up my time expectations accordingly for when little things like taping become day and a half or two day jobs. The next day. We're finally done taping up all the joist tape on the deck part. Also got Jeremy over there, who's uh, got a fabrication shop down the street, and I've hired him to build a fence right there so that this whole area is enclosed and I can just let Mr. Tex out in his yard without worrying about him jumping over the edge. I don't think he would, but I don't want to worry. Before we go further, a quick message from this video's amazing sponsor, Jackery. I've used a bunch of Jackery's products and I'm super excited to share with you guys the latest and greatest Solar Generator 2000 Plus. This thing is an absolute beast. I've been using it to power literally everything up on the roof deck for this build. We've had battery chargers for all our cordless tools plugged into it, phones, speakers, all the corded power tools, including a two and a half horsepower router. And to be honest, that's not even the tip of the iceberg for what this thing can do, because it can produce up to 6,000 watts. It has inputs for everything you need, old school USB, USB-C, four AC 120 volt outlets, or for the ultimate home power backup or RV setup, you can daisy chain together two SG2000 Plus units, each with up to five battery packs on it to get a whopping 24 kilowatts of power. That's enough backup to keep a home running for up to two weeks. For camping, overlanding, or your ultimate outdoor adventure, the SG2000 Plus is amazing when paired with Jackery's Solar Saga solar panels. They've got fast charging technology that can fully charge an SG2000 Plus in about two hours. The SG2000 Plus also has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which allows you to pair it with their app for real-time monitoring, customized settings, and more via Jackery's smartphone app. Also worth mentioning is this battery pack 2000 Plus. It's the industry's first battery pack that can be charged via solar panels. For those that are engaged in some serious outdoor adventures, this is going to be a major game changer. Like all Jackery generators, this thing is dead quiet less than 30 decibels. Basically, I can't even hear it when it's on. I also love that Jackery products provide clean, sustainable energy. Jackery's portable power stations are the first in the industry to receive a TUV carbon neutral certification. And now through July 10th, my viewers can get an amazing deal on an SG2000 Plus standalone or with the Solar Saga power kit. With the code plus Mike, you're gonna get 9% off, which is up to $450 off, depending on the package you pick. And of course, when you support a brand that supports the channel, you are also supporting the channel. So I thank you in advance for checking out Jackery for yourself. And much love to Jackery for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back into it. So back to the picture frame border for the deck. I found it easiest to do an accurate job using a combination of one-handed bar clamps and quick lever clamps from channel sponsor, Rockler Woodworking. These are super handy clamps for working alone. And with the picture frame border clamped in place, I could come back on the outside edge and tow heel in composite deck screws to hold the board in place. And then come back on the other side with Trex hidden deck fasteners, which will make for a super clean look with the Trex deck I'm using. By the way, I'm not sponsored by Trex, but I do absolutely love the look of this composite decking. So the idea here is I've left the far side of the picture frame open so that we don't have to cut each board individually to the exact length. Now, if this were absolutely a perfect square, we could probably just get away with doing the rest of the picture frame, cutting all these boards to the right size. One size should fit all if it's exactly square. I'm not 100% sure it's exactly square. You probably notice a gap between the picture frame and the ends of the board if you just try to cut them all to the same length at once. So I think the best option here is gonna to be to cut a bunch of boards 
to rough length, put them across here, lay the track saw down, and then chop the other length all at once right along the joist so that we know we got a nice flat edge that's even for the other side of the picture frame to go in, and then we'll just enclose it with that other side of the picture frame. For those of you that are visual learners like me, the main thing you need to know is that right here, I am cutting all the composite deck boards a little bit long, and we're gonna install them that way so we can rip them to exact length all at once. So the ends of these boards don't have the grooves on them, and we need these ends to go into our picture frame. So I've got a slot cutting bit in the router, and we're gonna make our own groove so that'll fit nicely. And for those of you that skip through the ad read, I gotta mention that I'm loving being able to power my router, charge all the batteries, and basically power everything on the roof for this build with my Jackery. We are bright and early on day I've lost count because it's been going on so long. But I'm starting to get that energy restored when you start to see the end of a project in sight. Tex, what do you think of the Trex? It should have been called Tex decking, not Trex decking, right? Yeah. <laughs> the gray color seems to be working well because it's sunny and he's, he's lying on it like it's nothing. So, oh, we're building this all for you. I know, I know, oh, I know. First thing up, uh, last night we actually put this divider piece in. So we had a decision to make because the section at the top of the U, or I guess the bottom of the U, is longer than 16 feet with the length of our board. So you could either butt two boards together, or what we decided to do here was put one vertical piece to kind of serve as a divider. It's right in the middle of the bottom of the U. We'll have two pieces that meet at that long divider piece. And I just think that's gonna look nicer than just kind of butting two pieces together. Now, because of that, it's gonna add a little complexity. When we cut this corner piece here, we're gonna have to do two things. We're gonna have to have a notch that goes around this corner here. And then the piece that extends past the notch has to be the exact length to butt up right against this divider. So I've measured everything, and then we've got the track saw over here, ready to make that notch cut. Very nice. And I just realized that I hadn't mentioned this earlier, but everywhere we've been routing a slot in the composite deck boards, we've also been using a roundover bit to match the roundover on the factory edges. Right as we were finishing the decking, a big rainstorm rolled in and it was a mad dash to cover all the tools with the tarp and get the cameras inside so nothing got ruined. And in that process, the microphone cord got bumped loose, which is why we are missing my lovely narration of that situation. One hour later. Game on. All we gotta do now is put the outer picture frame in. We're just gonna take the track saw, run it right along the edge to get a nice straight line and then right. drop the frame in. If all goes according to plan, should be easy. I gotta point out the depth of the track saw dialed in so nicely. Didn't even go through the joist tape. Look at that, we left the joist tape intact. So we got all the boards nice and perfectly straight and now the challenging part. We have to route the groove in the end of each of these boards which is difficult because I had to do surgery 
on this router bit. Basically, I had to take off the ball bearing that's normally there so that it doesn't hit the joist below the board and it clears it as we're going down the boards. Well, we were, we were perfect until I just clipped that one manually, but I think the roundover is actually gonna take care of that little F up there. Maybe it'll work. Yeah, you can see a little bit. That's gonna fall in the category of, I'm just not gonna tell anyone and we'll go with that. It is a lovely morning and it is time to finally put the outer edge on the deck. We got the drone in the air for some beautiful shots and let's just enjoy this moment of the picture frame being closed in. The first step here is installing a layer of three quarter inch ground contact plywood on top of the two by four joists. And before hauling the 16 sheets of plywood up to the deck, I use my CNC to drill three eighths inch holes in all the sheets, which is crucial because it allows for drainage. Once drainage holes were drilled, we could get to work screwing them down. Since pressure treated plywood generally is crazy wavy and warpy, using screws to attach it to the joist was a must in order to pull the sheet flat against the joist. Now we're running a bit behind schedule, so we had to pause mid install of the plywood sheets when my buddy Jacob showed up to lend some muscle carrying the crazy heavy rolls of artificial turf up to the roof. We have a massive hunk of grass here. It's 530 square feet, I think, 15 feet long. No way we're gonna carry this whole thing up onto the roof. The strategy here is that we're gonna cut down the three chunks that we need for the installation and carry the three chunks up separately. And hopefully by dividing it up, it'll be manageable with three people because uh, we got Jacob Don't changing in some work clothes right, right now. Let's roll this out. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay, this is manageable. Once we got the grass to the roof, we immediately unrolled it and allowed it to sit. As I understand it, this is a very important step. If you don't allow the grass to settle out flat, apparently this will result in lumps and bumps in the grass during install, which you definitely don't want. Uh, we put some joist tape on all the seams. We want the water to go through the holes and drain where we want and nowhere else. So we put in a uh, composite decking board around the edges of the plywood. And these are what's called nailer boards. These nailer boards are gonna allow us to staple the grass securely to them. Then we're gonna stretch it all the way to the other side, staple it in place, and we'll put an infill to hold the middle down. So next up, we install this stuff, which is called air drain. It's basically tiles that click lock together. Grass goes on top of this. And what this is gonna do is not only create a lot of space for water to flow freely through the grass for it to drain nicely, but also creates a lot of airspace under the grass. And when Tex does his business out here, it'll all flow through and clear out of the grass much nicer than if you just put the grass right over the plywood. When you look at it, it's kind of like, is that really gonna hold me in place? Yeah, it's a well-designed product. Like it feels really solid and once you get the grass on it, oh, it's cool. Well, I guess we are ready to put the first part of the grass in. We're gonna get it in tonight because I'm impatient. We could do it all tomorrow, but I really wanna see it go in. I know we still got to trim everything on the sides, but this edge, I mean, look how freaking cool that looks. Just like, just walk in between there. That looks so freaking cool. More important than what I thought, the inspector had to come out and check on the quality of our work. Just, uh... <laughs> oh, that's a happy dog right there. 
With the approval of Inspector Tex, it was time for a good night's sleep so we could come back the next day and hopefully finish off the grass installation. And this is the point where we answer the question some of you probably have about whether 2x4 joists are going to be strong enough. By screwing and nailing the plywood sheets across all the joists, you add a ton of lateral support and strength to the whole structure. Way more strength than you would if installing skinny deck boards across the joist. This, in combination with the fact we'll have one inch membrane tiles on top of the plywood to further distribute the loading, allows us to get away with 2x4 joists for the grass. Aesthetically, this is something I wanted to do because it's how I'm getting the grass level with the top of the deck. With the stack of two by fours, three quarter inch plywood, one inch membrane, and inch and a half tall grass blades, you end up with the blades of grass about one quarter inch above the deck boards, which I think will be perfect to achieve the look over the real yard I want. Guys, it is time to roll out the grass. Once we laid the second and third sheets of grass loosely in place, it was time to cut them to their final dimensions and then use turf seam tape to join all the sections together. This step of seaming along with cutting the edges next to the deck were the two things I was most nervous about. But as you'll see here, they ended up going pretty smoothly. He loves it. Since this video is getting pretty darn long, I'm not going to go into the full details of the grass installation here. Instead, I'll be releasing another full how-to video on grass installation. That'll be out about a week after this video, so keep your eyes out for that. The grass is in. All the edges are trimmed. I'm very excited how this is starting to look. And the last step is putting in some of this infill stuff. Basically, it's just pellets that are gonna sit in the grass and it's gonna hold the grass in place so it doesn't get carried off by the wind. All right, I am so stoked how this has turned out. I have a freaking yard, a freaking yard at the middle of downtown Chicago. Here's a moment of truth, Mr. Tex. Yeah, let's go check out the roof. Oh yeah, so exciting, oh yeah. all worth it. I think it's safe to say that Tex loves his new yard. I'm curious if you guys think we've accomplished our goal of putting a suburban yard on top of the city roof deck. Not just a deck with some grass on it, but something that actually feels like a real yard. If you guys have dug this video and think I've earned it, I would greatly appreciate it if you hit that sub and bell button and join this community. Got lots of great videos coming up, including a few more to take this deck to the next level and a final tour of the fully renovated abandoned building. That's it for this time, and I will see you guys next time.